Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Welcoming back to my digital world, brought to you by Tempest Network, is our regular contributor, CEO of Tempest Network, Shahal Khan. And today he is joined by the beautiful Nikita Sachdev. She's an Indian-American serial entrepreneur and investor. She's also the founder and CEO of Luna PR, headquartered in Dubai. They are an award-winning PR and marketing agency that focuses on the fintech and Web3 industries with expertise in NFTs, crypto, and blockchain. Today, we are chatting about how GameFi is becoming the next Silicon Valley for investors and what the cryptocurrency tie-in is all about. We'll also chat about how the United Arab Emirates is paving the way for all things Web 3.0. They are both coming on in just a few, but as they get settled into the broadcast room, let's chat. Now, if there's one thing that can be said for anything remotely connected to the internet and a computer screen, it's that if it's salacious, and that's me being polite in my mom terms, or if it's a video game, it's probably going to survive market turmoil. Now, the video game industry is currently priced at approximately $180 billion, with the GameFi sector making up $21 billion of it. Now, if Web 3.0 is about to disrupt the industry as Web 2 did in the 2000s, then venture capital fund managers have a lot of reason to pay close attention to the gaming sector. GameFi isn't just another opportunity for these VC funds. It's changing how and who gets to invest in new projects. So what happens when you open the GameFi ownership economy to a gaming industry that can amass audiences larger than the Super Bowl? Well, you get a new class of creative entrepreneurs and Silicon Valley VC funds very eager to invest. And here to chat further are Shahal Khan and Nikita Sachdev. Welcome to the show, superstars. Hi. Thanks so much for having us. Hi, Zen. Shahal, so nice to have you on. Nikita. Thank you so much for, for, for coming on the show. It's an honor to chat with you today. All right, Shahal, this is quite interesting. Last year, Andreessen Horowitz, which is a private American venture capital firm, invested $4.6 million in a leading gaming guild. Not an enormous amount in relevant terms, but with a $2.2 billion crypto fund in place, the venture capital firm is actively allocating. Now, this is a largely untapped economic opportunity in emerging markets that will clearly provide jobs by building a virtual economy in the digital world. And this sector is making us all rethink and redefine employment. Is this the rise of the creator economy by default from your point of view? I think uh, it's going to have a big part of it. And I was just in Dubai where I met Nikita and I was with several people in the UAE government. And, you know, they're doing amazing things like, um, you know, Abu Dhabi is going to release a sovereign backed coin, a stable coin very soon, backed by a massive amount of their um, capital. Uh, the exact amount, I'm not going to say, because uh, obviously they're going to be, you know, doing it soon. And, um, you know, they'll be uh, talking about it. Um, the government is also releasing regulations for exchanges and digital assets that can be uh, moved from digital wallets to exchanges to uh, different platforms. Uh, that means that people are, are going to be able to earn on different platforms and then exchange those um, assets uh, in terms of earning. So um, you, you need regulation. You need a platform with liquidity. And I think uh, from what I saw in the UAE, it's going to be massive and they're going to be leading that charge. Um, I was very happy to see what Nikita is doing on the PR front. And there's a really cool metaverse that's going to be launching soon called the Star Metaverse that she's going to be heading up there. That is taking sports, it's taking fashion, it's taking celebrities into this one metaverse. And it's going to allow these people and people that engage with them to engage and earn um, on that platform. So um, I think uh, the capital is going to come in surrounding the sort of areas where there's a sort of a... Um, I would say, a condensation of all these activities. Interesting, because the more, you know, if you really think of it from a big picture, the more people that come into these play-to-earn communities, the more value for those coins. So, you know, it's it's no different from traditional equity in that regard. The more people that buy Apple phones 
over others, the more value investors give to Apple. So, you know, there's always the risk that Apple becomes the next, you know, BlackBerry, so to speak. But all of these blockchain games, uh, these blockchain games are communities and many of them are set up so players can earn. And of course, cryptocurrency um, is at the center of it all. Nikita, I want to see, I want to get your point of view uh, with respect to the blockchain market. So the blockchain market is still in its in its early years, essentially, and the NFT games alone generated two point three billion dollars in revenue in the third quarter of this year of 2022. So the overall gaming industry is set to reach two hundred three billion dollars by this year. And we know that um, the United Arab Emirates is at the front of a lot of Web 3.0 activity. What do you say to this? And are investors eager? Initially, um, Dubai was the well, the UAE was just like any other country where they were skeptical about getting in. But I think um, Dubai is really trying to be at the forefront of technology and innovation. So I think once they realized uh, that um, blockchain is so much more than cryptocurrency, um, they realized that um, they should start thinking about how to implement it um, in several different areas. Um, NFTs is one use case of blockchain. Cryptocurrencies are another use case of blockchain. And now we're seeing a lot of uh, government right, uh, government uh, entities actually implement blockchain within their ecosystems. So, for example, um, we're working with um, the Museum of the Future, which has recently announced that they will be NFTing the um, the panels. Uh, the Museum of the Future is a very iconic building here in Dubai, and it has the ruler of Dubai's um, words kind of uh, transcribed on the on the panels. So it's it's very artistic. It's very meaningful for the country. So um, they've decided to NFT um, this the actual panels of the museum. So uh, people here can feel like they actually own a piece of history, uh, like they, they own a piece of legacy. Um, that's just one use case of it, but there, there are so, so many use cases and so many benefits of implementing blockchain. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And if you look at the statistics and Shahal, you could pipe in here. Um, Dubai stated in March of 2022 that it had enacted a new cryptocurrency law to oversee the activities of digital assets and cryptocurrencies, you know, as it really is striving to become a Web 3.0 powerhouse. And the UAE intends to establish a Dubai virtual assets regulatory authority under the new law, which will be in charge of regulating blockchain based virtual assets. Shahal, I know you're a big fan of regulation. What do you say to this? Well, you know, I've always said that you need regulation to a certain degree to have digital assets become global. And I think the UAE, um, you know, broken up in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and also uh, RAK, Ras Al Khaimah. I was honored enough to meet the Emir of Ras Al Khaimah before I came back. Um, they're uh, kind of uh, positioning themselves in different regulatory aspects. And when you combine all three um, emirates uh, under the UAE, you have almost like a base where um, investors as, as well as uh, entrepreneurs can choose different uh, parts of the emirate based on what they want to achieve. So Abu Dhabi is really leading with sheer capital and a market where you'll have a backup for your assets with capital, real stable coin capital, let's say, behind it, allowing people to be able to be safe in terms of their valuation of, of, of their actual currency, not plummeting. Dubai is innovating with allowing entrepreneurs a very easy environment to set up and, and start their businesses. RK is going into sports betting and, and, and gaming, which is you know allowing people to come in a regulated environment and do gaming and sports betting, which is extremely innovative for a country that is within an Islamic uh, framework. So if you put all three together, you're really getting the capability for the entire universe to be regulated and, and, and sort of safeguarded from, um, from uh, let's say, risk which is very important for this to take off. So some investors, guys, they see the, the the blockchain game world merging with the metaverse world and becoming its own economy. There's a real opportunity for metaverse economies at this point to empower their player bases across the globe in a way we really haven't seen before in gaming. And it's one of the things that blockchain games seems to be doing, making viable digital economies that are for players by players. Nikita, what do you say to this? So, yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, the gaming world kind of introduced the metaverse in the first place. So I don't really see it as like um, emerging into the metaverse. I see like gaming was always something 
like the metaverse, but it's definitely more um, immersive now. Uh, you can put on an Oculus, you can play with your friends, you can you definitely feel like you're more involved. And um, it has created an economy, like you said, um, where you can also get involved and, and purchase things within the metaverse in an NFT form. So you really, really own it. You can earn um, you can earn money via cryptocurrency. Uh, so it just makes gaming a lot more realistic. Shahal, yeah, I couldn't agree more. It makes gaming realistic and, and it's, it's solving real world issues. Shahal, what are your thoughts here? I think that um, it needs to continue to grow in terms of it's just the beginning of it. So a development of games across the board and also uh, development of actual, uh, uh, I would say, metaverses and uh, workflows that allow people to come in and participate. For example, charities, uh, education, um, but gamifying those aspects where um, there's a program within the metaverse where if people achieve certain goals to build something together that can also come into the real world and do benefit. Um, they're actually creating equity value and they're earning it behind the coin. That's really gonna become, I think, um, the super force for this um, as an economic tool. And it'll really now separate uh, uh, platforms that we have today that are not data sovereign um, and, and, and really get new platforms that are giving people ownership of the data and their work and compensating them for it. And as you know, Nikita has always said, it's all about community and around their communities are going to be formed and they're going to support each other. Simply exactly. put, I think that's the future. That yeah. is the future. And when you look at GameFi, you know, GameFi is expanding and maturing very quickly. You know, games are moving into a wider range of genres, such as these role playing games, right? And first person shooter games that have this crazy mass market appeal and are really designed from the onset to deliver this, this uh, PlayStation like gamer experience. Now, what we've seen is over the past year, GameFi has grown by 2000% in the first quarter of this year before the Ukraine war and, and really inflation caused sell-offs in the markets. Blockchain games raised about $2.5 billion in venture funding. Now, I don't know. Will that go kerplop? What, what is your expert opinion? Nikita, you go first. Um, no, I, I mean, I definitely see like GameFi is huge. So at Luna PR, we also have a VC division, Luna VC, and some of our most successful projects that we've invested in have been GameFi projects. Um, and uh, another thing I just want to add to that. So like, um, just about UAE, um, the investors here are um, very much interested in, um, in, any Web3 projects, especially GameFi, um, so much so that there are actually places here where you can uh, put on an Oculus and go into a metaverse um, and actually experience it, which I haven't really seen in any other country. So I feel like um, people here, investors have um, a lot more to relate to. Um, I don't think this industry is going to flop at, at all. Um, I think it's, it's going to grow uh, bigger. I couldn't agree more. I am a huge enthusiast. Shahal, what are your thoughts on this? I think that there's, uh, as we come out of COVID and, and God knows, you know, what other um, headache that continues to come on to our sort of uh, economic and geopolitical scene, we have a tremendous amount of population that just don't want to go back to work. And they don't want to be, you know, having menial job, uh, you know, sort of income in the Western markets, as well as the Asian markets, you know, in themselves, um, you know, uh, they have other opportunities. They're going to pay them more money just being on these metaverses and, and creating content. So I think um, we're going to come out of what has happened during COVID um, and uh, have a whole new area of economic and, and job growth. And I think this is going to be one of the main areas. Well said. Well said. You you hit it right right on. Um, Guys, we're now we're really out of time, but it's always enlightening having you on. Nikita, thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure. Shahal, always having you, always love having you come back on as a regular. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Nikita. That was My Digital World brought to us by Tempest Network. Please check out Nikita Sachdev at Luna PR on the gram at lunapr.io and make sure you check out tempest.network. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.